Elaine from the Sewing Basket in Plymouth, Wisconsin. We're here again to talk about our Fearless Quilting Two Block Challenge. This is session two. If you missed session one, it is on YouTube, on our Facebook page, and also in our network. Our network is play.sewingbasket.biz. That will get you in and all the videos from this process and all the upcoming videos will be there as well. So we're learning how to do quilt as you go and we're starting with just two simple blocks. Last week, or excuse me, earlier this week, on Tuesday, we showed you how to make blocks and we had you make two and just do some simple quilting. Remember that we talked about the fact that this is the first one. It's not going to be perfect. You're just learning the technique to see if you like it and see if you want to play along further. So very simple quilting. There were some questions posted on the network on quilting tips and tricks. Yes, you can use a walking foot. There's many other things we'll be sharing, but those are in the future videos to make quilt as you go better, faster, and more accurate. This is make two blocks. Today we're going to learn how to join them and we're going to bind it so you know how to complete a whole project. And then from there we're going to jump off and start with bigger projects, whatever you'd like to make. So that's where we're at right now. I know a lot of you are dying for more information and more fun. This block is pretty boring and oh, I could have added some appliques to it. I could cut out this bird and put it on here. I could have pieced this block. I could have, I could have, I could have. Lots of things that we're going to do in the future, but for this little two block challenge, all we needed you to do is have two blocks and be ready to connect them today. So that's where we're at. That's what we're gonna start doing. And we're going to move down to our cutting mat. You have your two blocks. This was a five by 10 piece, and this was about eight by 12 and a half, a little bit bigger all the way around. So the first thing that you're going to do is take a ruler and trim your block. We're trimming from the edge of our batting over. So I'm going to lay my ruler right on my one inch line on my ruler, right along the edge of my batting. And I'm also going to use one of the black lines here across the bottom so it'll help me get it straight. Uh, so I'm lining up this line to this line. That's nice and straight. Take my cutter and cut. And we're going to do that on all four sides. Again, lining a horizontal line along with the vertical right along the edge of the batting. So what I'm ending up with is a one inch overhang or seam allowance on all four sides. So this block is ready to go. This, this block I've already trimmed to one inch, so my two blocks are now ready to be connected. And I can connect it on either side. This one, I put this piece on this side. This one, I think I'll put it on the opposite side, just for a different look. So the way that they connect is you put the blocks back to back, and I line them up. And I'm making this hard for Kathy trying to film me as I move up and down. I'm going to lay it on my mat. And I can feel where the edge of that batting is along both pieces. And so I'm kind of feeling both edges, top and bottom, to get it nice and straight, as, lo as well as lining up my one inch seam. So as you can see, when I have this laid down, you don't see my bottom block at all. It's lined up right underneath. My batting is even with my batting. And then, of course, I set my pins right behind you, Kathy. I had everything just where I was going to need it. So here are my pins. I tend to pin, 
parallel to the edge of my batting, just outside. So I'm going to just pin here, and I'll hold this close to the camera in a second, and you'll see that my pins are all pointing in this direction and parallel. If I pin this way, it makes a big hump. It's hard to get through that batting. So I'm pinning parallel to my seam allowance, and now I'm going to stitch from the very edge here, I'm going to do a lock stitch, stitch right along the edge of the batting. I'm going to just catch that batting by a tiny bit. It helps support my seam allowance. And as I'm sewing, because I put my pins in this way, I start to sew and I can pull my pins out as I go. What that's going to leave me with is my two blocks connected and my seam allowance to the front. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Now you've got to watch us shuffle the camera for just a second. We're going to move over to the sewing machine. And I'm actually going to edge stitch it so you can see just what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to take my little iron with me because we're going to need that in a minute as well. Kathy, just a second to get set up here. So here are my two blocks ready to go. I'm going to start right here and do a lock stitch. That's three stitches in place. And then I'm going to sew right along here, catching the, the tiniest bit of batting and off the edge and do a lock stitch. And the foot that I have on my machine is my J foot. There's a little piece of plastic here. So that will hold my batting down as I stitch along. And it's got a nice edge here that I can line up along the edge of my batting. Again, the, the other videos inside the Fearless Quilting Topic in the network, those videos are pre-recorded and there's a lot more detail. So those are the ones you're going to watch. This is our quick how-to and get you started. So I'm lined up here, drop my needle, do a little lock stitch, and then hit the gas. And I'm lining up my needle is just inside my batting. So I'm sewing right along that edge. And these pins, these are the Quilter Select pins. They're nice and fine, so I can actually sew right over them. They don't get in my way. If I had a bigger pin, I can just pull these out as I stitch along. The straighter you are, the more accurate you cut, the better your blocks will be. So it's a practice thing. And that's why we wanted to start with this two block challenge so that you had a chance to practice and see if you like the technique. Ooh, I've got my pin caught under there. There we go. And that's going to be the perfect thing to show you what happens if you make a mistake. It's very fixable. So here I am. Pins out seam allowance to the front. Now I'm ready to roll my edges. The look that we're going for is this. These each get turned under and then edge stitched. So the way that you do that, start at your ironing board with a bit of best press. And I start by pressing it flat, just to get everything nice and flat and even. And then I open it up, and I just push the seam allowance to one side or the other. It doesn't matter, I'm just trying to open that seam allowance. Flip it over to the back, and give it a good press so that seam is nice and flat. Then I come back to the front, open the seam allowance, 
give it a spray of best press. And now I want to be sure that that seam is pressed really nice and flat open. I don't want any puckers or wrinkles. So I'm using my fingers and spreading that seam apart so I've got a really nice even seam. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to take the edge, the raw edge, and fold it inside and under. And there are a lot of tips and tricks to doing this and getting it smooth and even that we'll go through in future videos. But for today, we want to get it curved, turned under, and pressed. You want a nice hot iron. I love this little iron. It gets real hot. And here you can see I didn't, I made it crooked. I didn't roll it all the way under. So just get that flat and be sure I push that all the way in. So this seam allowance is lined up with your stitch line. And that way your sashing will be nice and even. Okay. So that's ready to go. I've got one little pucker in my ironing. And then I'm going to come back to my machine and I'm going to do what's called edge stitching. I'm going to stitch real close to that outer edge. Find a spot on your foot that you can line up. I'm using this inner edge of the plastic. Do a lock stitch. Keeping this rolled under where I, as I go along, keep that edge rolled under. You can use a little bit of a glue stick. If it's making you nervous, you can just run a little glue stick across there, tuck it in, and that will help keep it in if that gives you a little more confidence. And I'm doing this fast and on camera, so it's not going to be perfect, but it's showing you what you need to do. The better you press, the more accurate your project will be. And that is my first edge stitch. Now I'll go back to the ironing board and press that second edge under and stitch that edge. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to bother sewing this. You've seen me sew one. You're going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then it's going to look like this. So that's how my blocks are joined. If I were making a quilt, I'd join the next one here, the next one here, would be exactly the same thing. Seam allowance to the front, roll each side over. From here, you do the outer edge binding on our placemat. If I was doing a big quilt, I might have two rows that I'm connecting. I put my two rows back to back, stitch with the seam allowance to the front, and roll under. So the process just continues no matter what size. Again, future videos are going to show you a lot more information, um, full video on everything. But for today, we've got these two blocks joined, and now I'm going to turn this edge under to create my binding. I've already done this side for our next step. But here, all I'm going to do is press along the edge of the batting. You can see that okay, Kathy? Mm -hmm. So I've pressed this even with the batting, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to line up that raw edge with my stitch line and roll that over. And again, iron that down. A little bit of best press always helps. Turn that under and roll this over. Give it a real good press. The better you press, the easier it will be to sew. Okay. 
And if you're not trying to hurry to be on camera and not waste all your time, it presses a little bit easier. All right, so we're going to pretend that's beautifully straight. It's not too bad. And I'm going to do the edge stitch on this side. Just move my needle to the other side. I could go from the other end, or you can flip your needle to the other side. Both work. Depends on what features you have on your sewing machine. Go pretty quick along here. I'm not going too straight. I've got a little bit of a pucker, which I can just stop and hold down, straighten as I go. Again, more detail on that in future videos. The other thing that you'll find on the recorded videos, the um, there's a lot more detail. They're clear, and the volume's always a little better. All right, so now I have my placemat with my top and my bottom. Now to finish my outer edge, I do the same thing. I turn this over and press, and then I roll the ends under. Fabric stretches as you're sewing it, and you can see these corners are the tiniest bit stretched. I can just trim those off, and it'll make my turning a little easier. So I'm going to flip this over, little best press, Press the first one over, roll the next one under. And then I'm ready to do the exact same thing. Just edge stitch, lock stitch when I start. That's my outer edge. I'm going to roll the end here, do the exact same thing, and your placemat is going to look like this. So I've got one done in each direction, what I added on the, on the half. So that gives you a feel for what the process is, how to finish off your two block challenge, and I'm going to have Kathy flip the camera around one more time for a second, and I'll just show you a couple little things for inspiration. So we're going to talk about different ways to do things. The quilt behind me was done with 18 inch blocks. And then there was applique and piecing inside of them. And we did the back in just a big paisley. The back wraps to the front, so here's your sashing from that paisley fabric. I didn't want the sashing to show quite like this. This clearly is square blocks with a sashing. My back is all one color, so my sashing is all the same color. Same on here, but by using that print fabric, paisley, you don't notice it quite as much. I also, when I place my blocks, I offset them so it doesn't look just like a sampler quilt with straight squares and rows. This was done for a child's blanket with cuddle fabric, so just fuzz and flannel and corduroy, all different textures, easy to do, quick project. This was done with 7 inch front squares and 9 inch back squares. And this little one is just an idea of things to do with panels. You can pop panels into all different places. 
you are going to see lots and lots of samples over the next few weeks as we continue with our fearless quilting challenge. Hopefully you've enjoyed making the first two blocks. From here, we're going to learn other methods and techniques. We've talked about the back wrapping to the front. You can also do the front wrapping to the back so there's no sashing. You can also apply a sashing over the top as a separate piece of fabric. You can do quilt as you go during construction, so your quilting is actually part of your block assembly. All of those things are things that we'll be talking about over the next number of weeks. Different types of blocks, different things you can use, memory items, um, t-shirts make great, great quilt as you go projects. It's so much easier than a giant t-shirt quilt. Um, as I said, memory items, mom sweaters, dad's ties, all different things. Again, you don't have to make a quilt. It can be a wall hanging, it can be a throw pillow, all different things that you can do using Quilt You Go. So again, we hope you join, join us on the network, play.sewingbasket.biz. We will be very quickly adding description to the bottom of this video with the links on how to get there. Once you're in our network called Studio Y, you'll go into the network and under Topics, look for Fearless Quilting Challenge, and then anytime we post something new, you'll see those videos coming up. They're there for your access. You don't have to watch us live. Most of the upcoming videos will be pre-recorded for you and just turned on. We debated doing this block of the month and decided that was just too far apart. We didn't want to wait that long, but also once a week is a bit much. So we're going to say every week or two or so, We'll post new video for you. If you've got questions, post your questions on the network and we will reply and answer to those as we see them. We really appreciate you joining us. We hit a milestone this morning. We hit 900 members on our network. We're looking forward to more of you joining us and hope you're enjoying the videos. Thanks so much. See you soon.